So when you look on our capital allowance this topic, we it is normally we are saying it is normally granted instead of depreciation as a compensation for the loss of value of assets. So remember, the assets are going to be losing some values. Uh, value based on the wear and tear, and uh, we are saying that, that is an example uh, used in the business to generate taxable income. And we have said uh, that the capital allowances are normally included. We normally have investment allowances or investment deductions. We normally have industry building deductions, wear and tear allowances. We have farm work deductions, mining allowances. Then we have shifting investment deductions. So let me start with the first one. Right, we have investment investment deductions right and this is what we are calling id and uh, when we discuss about id uh we really need to understand that the id is normally granted to all manufacturing assets and that is the thing that i was able to, to state earlier um one minute oh, thank you so i have said it is granted it is granted. And the way we are reading, uh, we, we, we are teaching it here, it is the same way the public finance under the um under the intermediate level should also be capturing the same information. So when you look at it here, investment deduction is normally granted on manufacturing assets. Is normally granted on manufacturing assets, is normally granted on man manufacturing assets only um um um, on manufacturing assets, uh, currently at the rate, currently at the rate of 50% in the first year, 50% in the first year, first year of use, first year of use, and 25%, and 25% um, the residue value, residue value in the subsequent years. In the subsequent years. So it means that the 50% is normally granted in the first year uh, of the machine. Then uh, the residue values are normally granted at the rate of 25%, right? On the rate of 25%. So in this case, Let's go back to it and we say in in the year 2003, in the year 2003, right, the rate was 70 percent. The rate was 70 percent, right? That is the residue of that tea. That is the residue, the residue of 30 percent. The residue of 30% qualified for IBD. Qualified for IBD and WTA qualified for IBD and WTA um, class two. Remember, there before it was class four, now it is class two for buildings and machinery. For buildings, for buildings and machinery respectively for buildings uh, for buildings and machinery respectively such assets normally include such assets includes such assets include number one uh, we normally have um, such assets include the cost of factory building the cost of factory buildings. We also have in other structures and other structures associated with it. Associated with it, associated with it. Such as we have borehole, we have borehole there. We have drainage systems. We have drainage system. We also have a sewerage, sewer system. We have sewerage system there. We also have 
קרים את הוולף? קרים את הוולף? קרים את הוולף? We also have קרים את הוולף? We have Lord E.B. We have Lord E.B. We also have Parkinson. We have Parkinson. We have driveways. Driveways. Etc. Driveways. Etc. We also have. This also normally qualifies for investment deductions. Processing machineries. Processing machinery and other machineries. Another machinery associated with it. Associated with it. That is, we also have things like water pump. We normally have water pump there. We also have packaging machine. We have packaging, packaging machine. We also have things like... Um, Conveyor belts. We have conveyor belts there. We have air cleaner. We have um, silencer. We also have waste treatment plants. Waste treatment plants. We also have things like um, Workshop machinery. We have workshop machineries. We have generator, uh, packaging machine. If we, I stated it somewhere. We have the packaging machines. We have generators, and you know the generator we have, which I'm, I'm, I'm talking about is the one that is going to be supporting uh, for power supply. And be here, right? We are talking. Effective 2020, effective 2020, effective 2020, ID is granted at the rate, ID is granted at the rate of 50%, uh, of 50% of the qualifying cost, of the qualifying cost of an asset, of the qualifying cost in the first year, in the first year, in the first year of use, and the residue, and the residue at the rate of 25%, of the rate of 25%, at the rate of 25% per annum, Per annum on reducing on reducing balance basis on reducing balance basis on reducing balance basis number two let me this be number one number two we are saying that uh, land do not or land does not qualify land does not qualify for any capital allowance for any capital allowance. Land does not qualify for any capital allowance. Number three, we normally do something called 10% test. What are we discussing here? We say, these apply to the cost. This normally applies to the cost of showroom. Normally apply to the cost of showroom, retail shops, we have retail shops there. We have um, offices. We have a demand block. A demand block there. And caretakers. And caretakers dwelling house. And caretakers dwelling house. So we are saying, if included... 
in the cost of factory building. Even included in the cost of factory building, then the 10%, then the 10%, the 10%, then the 10%, then the 10 right? If included, I have said, if they are going to be included in the cost of the factory building now, then we are supposed to be calculating if including the cost of the factory building, then the 10% should be calculated should be calculated to determine whether to determine whether they they are going they they, they are going to be deducted they are going to be deducted from the cost of uh, they are going to be deducted they are going to be deducted they are going to be deducted from the cost of factory building they are going to be deducted from the cost of factory building if they are proportion their proportions exceeds 10%. If their proportion is going to be ex exceeding 10%, uh, such assets, if deducted, let me put that, if deducted, the, the assets will qualify, the assets will qualify for IBD. The assets will be able to qualify for IBD. Why are we doing this? Uh, the 10% is normally done because sometimes in our question you are going to be finding the cost of this asset being included, these assets which we have already listed down there, being included in the, in the overall cost of the factory building. So if included, um, you're supposed to be calculating the 10% test, right? Let me, for example, say we have the factory building. Sorry, we have um, showrooms given in the question. You have showroom. Plus, the, you might be given offices. Um, we have uh, a domain block. Let me say you are being given the three. Then you are going to be dividing this, right, by the total cost of factory building. The total cost of the factory building, then you multiply by 100%. And we have said if this calculation which you are, you are going to be doing exceeds the 10%, then you are supposed to be taking the cost of these assets, subtract from the factory building costs, right? There, it means there will be a reduction. Then the assets, once you have subtracted, then already you take them directly uh, to be, uh, to qualify for IBD, to qualify for IBD. Now, I just want to engage on uh, something different. Let me now go to number two. Number two, we are discussing about uh, the second capital allowance, where we are talking about industrial building, industrial building deductions. This is what is called IBD, industrial building deductions, industrial building deductions. And I will say, it is granted on non-manufacturing. It is granted. It is granted on non-manufacturing. It is normally granted non-manufacturing. It is normally granted on non-manufacturing buildings. It is normally granted on non-manufacturing buildings. On. Let me check on. Let me check on that. There must be a change of guards. One minute. One minute now. Just confirming whether it is on a reducing or it is on a straight line basis. Well, I might be using a lot of time to confirm it. So let me just uh, use the uh, it is normally granted on uh, non-manufacturing buildings. 
um, which are warehouses. Uh, okay, warehouse uh, stuff clinic. I'm gonna confirm here something like that. Mm -hmm. Most guys. So, moving the curves. Calculators, furniture, the documentation. I will confirm that. Let me just continue with it. So, it is normally granted on manufacturing buildings on, um, uh, on reducing, reducing balance basis. Is normally granted on a reducing balance basis, currently at the rate of 10%. Currently at the rate of at the rate of 10% per annum, effective 2020. Effective 2020. Sometimes an examiner might be bringing some assets which are beyond 2020. For example, there is a question you might be finding, uh, which is for, for example, 2018, uh, 2016. So we say here, before 2020, before 2020, it was granted on a straight line basis. It was granted on a straight, on a straight line basis. It was granted on a straight line basis before 2010. Before 2010, you say before 2010, the IBD rate, the IBD rate was 2.5%. Before 2010, the IBD was at the rate of 2.5% per annum. That is, such buildings. Such buildings, such buildings are considered are considered to have attack line of 40 years. They are normally considered to have attack life um, of uh, they are normally considered to have um, such building that is before 2010, the high BD rate uh, was at the rate of 2.5% per annum. Such buildings are considered to have a tax life of uh, before 20, the tax life. Currently, after 2010, after 2010, the lifespan of uh, the lifespan of such buildings, such buildings is 10 years. Is 10 years. After it was 10 years. Now we are saying. They include, they normally include one, uh, we have warehouse, two here, we have staff clinic, three, we have things like uh, staff quarters, staff quarters, number four, we have things like uh, canteen, Number five, we have gym. Number six, we have um, office. Talk admin block. Number seven, we have. Number seven, we have showrooms. We have showrooms. Number eight, we have shops. We have shops. We have uh, social halls. social halls, ETC, ETC. Those are some of the assets which normally qualifies uh, for such kind of, uh, uh, such kind of uh, capital allowance. So you just need to be understanding where the assets normally lies. Now let us go to the next examinable uh, capital allowance. The, the next uh, examinable, uh, we talk about wear and tear allowance. We talk about wear and tear allowances. Number three. 
This is what is called WTA. We entail allowances. And we say um, it is granted non-manufacturing machineries and equipment. It is granted on non-manufacturing uh, non-manufacturing machineries machinery and equipment is normally granted on non-manufacturing uh, machineries and equipment. Effective 2020 Effective 2020, WTA is classified into two classes. So it means there before we used to have four classes. So in this case, we are going to be starting with class one. But one, we have class one at the rate of 25% per annum on a reducing balance basis. On a reducing balance basis. So in this case, we are saying um, they include they include a um, heavy as moving as the moving bi uh, costs. They include every earth moving uh, vehicles, e.g., we also we talk about caterpillar. We normally have caterpillars. We also have tractors. We also talk about uh, or we talk about bulldozers. We have bulldozers there. We have compiled a uh, uh, com uh, combined. It should be combined. Avesta, combined Avesta. We also have forklift. We have forklift there. We have lorries. When you talk about lorries below, we talk about below and above three tons. Lorries below. And above three tons. We have pickups. Uh, we are not going there. Um, the others we have. Uh, uh, other machineries include other machineries include we have pickups. We have pickups there. We also have saloon cars. We have saloon cars. We have tuk tuk. Motorbikes. Motorbikes. We also have limo. Aircraft. We have aircraft there. Delivery van. Delivery van, we have staff bus, staff bus ETC, NB, NB there. <clears throat> in case of an, an in case of an uncommercial vehicle, in case of an uncommercial vehicle, e.g., saloon car. In case of an commercial vehicle, e.g. saloon car, the qualified cost is restricted to three millions. The qualified cost is restricted to three million Kenya shillings. Is restricted to three million. For example, for example, here we are talking about uh, in case. Sorry. If the actual cost of a saloon car, if the actual cost of a saloon car, if the actual cost of a saloon car costs 
4 million Kenya shillings. 4 million Kenya shillings, right? The, the WTA for this alone car would be, you're going to be saying, should be 25% of 3 million, but you have to be telling the examiner you are restricting, you are restricting, which is equivalent now to 750,000. 750,000, 750,000. That is how uh, you deal with the saloon cars. That is how you deal with saloon cars. So in case the saloon car is going to be costing 4 million, then it means um, the, the WTM for that saloon car should be 25% of 3 million. But what is about what about if it is less than 3 million? For example, if the actual cost of that saloon car is 2.8, how are you going to be calculating the WT? It will be 25% of 2.8. But if it is ex if it exceeds 3 million, then uh, the only amount which is normally recognized by uh, the Income Tax Act is 3 million. Is 3 million. That is how uh, you are supposed to work on saloon cars. The other, uh, the other um, assets which normally qualifies, the other assets which normally qualifies uh, for class 1, the other assets which normally qualify for this class one, right? They are normally called um, the office electronic equipment. I think it should be number B. Office electronic equipments. E.g., the office electronic equipments we normally have. Um, uh, you know that the office electronic, they are the things which normally defines an office. We have computers. We have things like uh, photocopiers. We have things like uh, printer. We have ETR, right? We have ETR. We also have scanner. We have calculator. We have calculators there. We also have Duplicating machine. Duplicating machine. We also have um, electronic paper shredder. Electronic paper shredder. We also have websites. We also have soft softwares. ETC, software's ETC, software's ETC. Now, um, let us go to class two, because I think all these we were talking about, we were discussing about class one. So I just want us to go to class two. Uh, so number two, we have class two. Let me put it in this manner, class two. At the rate of 10%, at the rate of 10% per annum, on a reducing balance basis. On a reducing balance basis, and we are saying it includes other assets. It includes other assets. It includes other assets used in business. It includes other assets used in business, but it includes other assets which are used in business, but do not qualify. Do not qualify. For WTA, do not qualify for WTA under class one. Under class one. E.g., we normally have things like furniture and fittings. Furniture and fittings. We have things like furniture and fittings. We have uh, partitions. We have things like partitions. We also have uh, fax machines. We have fax machines. We have things like neon sign. We have things like uh, office carpets. We have office carpets. We have things like wheelbarrows. Wheelbarrows. We have things like bicycles. 
We have things like uh, um, we have curtains. We have things like um, generator. These are the small generators. Uh, we have things like uh, water tank. We have water tank. We have loose tools. The loose tools, we have things like spanners. We have things like spanners, pliers. We have things like hammers, etc. Okay. We also have things like utensils. They qualify here, etc. etc. <clears throat> that is what you just need to know about the most common uh, assets. The most, these are the most common assets uh, which are basically used. And therefore, um, uh, these are the most, sorry, capital allowances which are commonly used in our exams. And we just need to be familiar with them. So in that regard, I just want us to engage on uh, doing an illustration so that we can be able to, uh, to capture this knowledge which already uh, we are uh, we have already um, uh, passed through uh, for more understanding. So I just wanted to do an illustration, which I request us to shift our attention to that side. So the question which I just want to do was tested on uh, the question which I just want to do was tested on May twenty eighteen. Question number five. And also, we shall be able to do another question which was tested on May 2015. I think I don't have that. But once I get it, I will be able to do it. So you just allow me to do a one illustration on this topic. And then I will be able to incorporate uh, that knowledge to other questions of other topics which we shall be dealing with uh, by explaining more about the capital allowance. Because there is no any question, there is no any topic which lacks capital allowances um in in our advanced taxation so i have said we are doing a question which was tested on the uh, may 2018 question five may 2018 question number five may 2018 question five may 2018 question five i think we are still continuing writing our notes all right so let me just clear here So I'm talking about May 2018. May 2018. May 2018, question number five. Let me question number five, five. I don't know whether there is A, but let us go there. May 2018, question five. Kevin can read for us. Kevin? Someone else? The following is the income statement of Savannah Limited 
a manufacturing company for the year ends at 1st December 2017. Gross profit 11 5 20, 11 million exchange gain 148,000. Dividends from Azina Cooperative net 68,000. Dividends from subsidiary company 244,000. Uh, let us just go to additional information because all that information we can be able to see it. Uh, additional information number one uh, the company operates in a factory building whose, cost, whose construction cost at the time of first operation on 1st January 2003 and was 4,800,000. The cost of this building is included in the in the director's emolument. The, the company installed processing machinery cost two million eight eight hundred thousand in the year two or three. Number two, on on first July twenty seventeen, the company acquired portable packaging machine at a cost of four hundred and twenty thousand computers. 204,000 and doing skill machine 40,000. Number three, on 1st October 2017, the company put into use of staff canteen constructed at a cost of 708,000 and the go down whose cost was 600,000. Number four, legal expenses included includes Cost for dispose, disposal of burned packaging materials, 7,000. Negotiating a loan agreement at 6,000. Processing a legal document for a new factory plant, 15,800. Defending a company against a lawsuit for smuggled goods by a director, 94,000. Repelling patent document for registration, 200. 52800 scroll down scroll down okay number 5 the prof gross profit was overstated by 10% and includes a figure for purchases of 304000 which had been understated by 15% the electors allowance include manage, management fees of 495000 from an elector, an elector of one of the subsidiary companies, interest on loan of Kenya shillings 96000 from end office was included in the electors emolument. Uh, the interest was to be treated as received from a Vini capitalized company required a statement of adjacent taxable profit and loss for the year ending December 2017. Tax liability is A for the year ending 31st 2017 December. A comment on the payment of tax for the year ending 31st December 2017. Assuming that the, assuming that tax and been paid during the year 2017 based on the previous year. Year's tax of 2,400,000 notes. Use capital allowance rates in the year of asset acquisition. That note should be giving us a, a bit of light note or for understanding that uh, we are going to be applying the uh, the capital allowances rates for which the asset was acquired. And that is where you could see in our note, we were able to state um, in every decade the, the interest rates which have been uh, used. So in that regard, we it should be giving us a good understanding on uh, determination. For, for instance, when you look on the additional information number one, you'd be able to see that the company operates in a factory building whose construction cost at the time of fa uh, first operation on 2003 was 4.8 uh, 4 million. And you can see that asset was um, acquired uh, before 2010. And you remember 
when you are discussing about uh, the industry investment deductions you can see that in the year 2003 the rate was at 70% then the 30% was used as a residue um, for IBD and WTA for building and machinery respectively that is one of the knowledge which we is going to be applied here but you have been told that the cost of this building is included in the director's emolument so the company is told processing machinery costing 2.8 um 2.8 million in the year 2003 so it means as we have to be looking on the qualifying cost based on the current period which we are working on so in that regard we are going to be starting our question by doing some computations to determine the qualifying cost for that building and machinery now in that case let me start here with workings. And we are starting with the, the qualified costs, right, for IBD and WTA. The qualified costs for IBD and WTA. Remember here, we are discussing about uh, for factory building and also for the processing machinery. Let me start with the first one, number A here. We start with the factory building. We start with the factory building. So based on the factory building in our case here, uh, we, we need to be understanding that the qualified cost for IBD during that period was calculated like this. The qualified cost was 30% of 4.8 million. So how much was it in Kenya shillings? How much is that in Kenya shillings? That is how they calculated it during those days so he in the sangapi 30 percent of 4.8 million it should be something close to let me take my calculator 0 0.3 times 14 40, it was around uh, 0 0.3 times uh, 4.8 million we should be getting something closer to 14 40 sorry so in this case, our answer here should be Kenya shillings, 1440,000. 1440, that is the qualifying cost for IBD, right? For the factory building. Now in that case, we are saying, it is very important to understand how much is the residue balance is. So the, the residue brought down, uh, the residue brought down is at 1st January, 2017. What is the residue but, uh, brought down is at 1st January 2017. And I will be able to say the, the residue brought down, brought down, we are supposed to be taking our qualified costs minus the total, the total IBD claim. The total IBD claim. That is how we are supposed to be computing our residue brought down. Now, in that case, let us look on uh, our residues uh, and we, we really understand that uh, the qualifying cost of ours is 1440,000. Then we subtract the total IBD claims. How are we going to be doing so? Uh, the IBD, when you look on the notes which I gave you there, we say, uh, we say this, eh? that uh, before 2010, the IBD rate was at the rate of 2.5%. So I will be able to take 2.5%. We multiply it by 2.5% uh, of the qualifying cost, which is 1440. We multiply by the time now we are claiming it. Where between 2003 and 2017, I think it should be 14 years. Will be 14 years. So what will be the residue brought down? I say it will be 14, 40,000 minus 2.5 divided by 100. 2.5 divided by 100 times 14, 40 times 14 years. We are getting something closer to 5 or 4,000. So what is the difference here? 14, 40,000 minus my answer we should be getting Kenya shillings 936,000. 936,000. That is our qualified, the residue brought down. But remember in your notes we said, when you are looking on the IBD, we said that before 2010, 
the tax life of this factory building was 40 years. So if you don't want to use this method, you can try this. Or you can say if 40 years is equal to how much? If 40 years it was the equivalent, the qualifying cost is 1440. If 40 years is, is equivalent to 1440,000, right? So how many years does this machine um, have? How many remaining uh, years do the, the factory building has? So in this case, it means you just need to take 40 minus 14, right? The difference should be around 26 years. You say it should be how much? So you say 26 divided by 40 times 1440. So how much is this in Kenya shillings? 26 divided by 40, we multiply by uh, 1440,000. We are getting around 936,000. We are getting 936,000. That is how the computations, uh, if you don't want to use the first method, you can also use the second method and you get the same answer. Let us go to the processing machinery. Let us go to the processing machinery and to calculate the qualifying cost for WTA. The qualifying cost for WTA will be equal to, we take the 30% times the cost of the processing machinery was 2.8 million. So how much is this intention? It will be 0 0.3 times 2.8 million. We get 840,000. 840,000. So from there, remember when we, we are doing the WTA, we don't really talk about the residues, but we talk about the written, written down values. So to calculate the written down value is at first January 2017, the written down value at the beginning of the year. So in that regard, we normally take the qualifying cost, one minus R, we raise to our N. So our qualifying cost is how much? Our qualifying cost is how much? We have said is 840,000. <coughs> one minus, what is our rate? The rate of ours, remember now, it is the, the rate in which this asset is going to be uh, qualifying in WTA. And the, the, the current rate for class two is 10%, 0 0.1. We raise to the number of years that asset has been in existence, which is 14 years. So how much is it? It will be 840,000 multiplied by what? One minus 0 0.1, we get 0 0.9. Then we raise for 14. Raise for 14, we get around 0 0.9. Two two eight eight. Then we multiply by eight hundred and forty thousand. We are going to be getting Kenya shillings one ninety two thousand one hundred and sixty five. One ninety two thousand one hundred and sixty five. One hundred and sixty five. Now, after you do those computations, let us now do the capital allowances. Capital allowances. For 2017. Remember, we are doing for 2017. And we are going to be starting with the ID, investment deductions, um, investment deductions, right? So we are going to be taking the nature of assets, the nature of the assets. We normally have the qualifying cost, the nature of the assets, we have the qualifying cost there. The nature of the asset, we have qualifying costs, and then we have ID at the rate of, we have talked about 50% currently. There before it was 100%. Now let us go to the questions and we look on the assets which are qualifying for ID. And uh, I will be able to state certain uh, additional information too. We have been told on 1st July 2017, the company acquired portable packaging machine at a cost of 420,000. That is the only asset in that question, which is qualifying packaging machine. We are talking about 420,000. 
If you take half of this, it should be 210,000. If you could be able to follow the question, there is no any other assets which is qualifying for, for the ID. And if there is no any uh, asset which is qualifying for ID, therefore, um, our ID at this year will be 210,000. Now, in this case, we don't factor the time the asset, when you are calculating the ID, you don't discuss about the period in which the asset was acquired. It is different uh, from IBD. Let us look on how we normally calculate our IBD. Then we normally have the nature of assets. Nature of assets. Also, we normally have qualifying costs. Residue brought down. Normally have our residue brought down there. We also have IBD rates. IBD rate, we are going to be factoring it there. We also have IBD amount. Then we have something called residue carried down. So in that regard, remember there is a computation which we have done here and we have said that that asset is going to be qualifying for, for IBD and that asset is the factory building. So the factory building, you can be able to see the qualifying cost you are able to get is 14, 40,000. Correct. The residue brought down at the beginning of 2017, we have gotten is 936,000. The IBD rate of this uh, factory building, remember it was acquired before 2010 and we have already been told to uh, strictly to follow the period in which the asset was acquired and that is what we are doing. So in this case, we know the IBD rate at that period was 2.5%. Was 2.5%. What will be the IBD amount? It will be 2.5%, 0.025. We multiply by the qualifying cost of 14, 40,000. We get around 36,000. How do I normally get the residue carried down? I take the residue brought down minus the IBD amount. And here we are going to be getting... 900,000. You're going to be getting 900,000. Let us look on any other asset which is qualifying of, um, for, for IBD. I can see note number three. And when you're calculating the IBD, by the way, always, always um, prorate the periods, the period, um, uh, the assets was put into use. So it means here yeah, the computations are going to be based on the time the asset was put into use. And I can see this period, we have two assets which are qualified for IBD, but were, you, were put into use on October 2017. The first one is staff canteen. The qualifying cost would be the total value, which is 780000 but we don't have the residue value. The IBD rate here is 10%. The IBD there is 10%. But what about the IBD amount? Because already, we know that asset is staying um, in use for three months. October, November, December. It will be 3 over 12 times 10% times 780,000. So how much is it? 3 divided by 12 times 0 0.1 times Seven eight thousand. We are getting around nineteen five hundred. We are getting around nineteen five nineteen five hundred. Right, nineteen five. What about the residue carried down? It will be the qualifying cost minus the IBD because we don't have the residue balance, uh, brought down for the staff canteen. So I just need to take seven eight thousand minus nineteen five, getting seven sixty five hundred. Right, let me continue the statement and, and go down. Go down also qualifies here. Yeah? I go down of how much? You can see we have a go down of 600,000. You do the same. We don't have the go downs, 10%. But here, when you are calculating the IBD amount, we say 3 over 12 times 10% times what? 600,000. So, how much are we getting here? 
So three divided by twelve times zero point one times six hundred thousand. You are going to be getting fifteen thousand. So six hundred thousand minus my answer. Here we are getting five eighty five. So how much is the IBD amount here? The IBD amount will be fifteen thousand plus nineteen five plus that six thousand. We are getting seventy thousand five hundred. Seventy thousand five hundred. Then let us go to our last. Our last capital allowance as per the question. We should be capital allowances. It should be the capital, sorry, we should be the WTA. It should be the WTA. So number three, we are going to be talking about the WTA. So under the WTA, we, we have said we normally have two classes. We have class one at the rate of 25%. Then we have class two here at the rate of 10%. So your question, you're going to be starting with the written down values at 1st Jan 2017. The written down values is at that period. And I can see we have one. The written down values, we have the processing machinery. We have the processing machinery there. So our processing machinery, the return down values are at the beginning of the period is 192,000, which qualifies for class two. 192, 165. 192, 165. 192, 165. The other assets which you acquire during the year, they, you normally talk about additions. Additions. So our additions are how much? So when I go to note number note number two, I can see we have some computers which were purchased. So how much were our computers? You can see we have been told the computers of 240,000 were acquired. So here I put 240,000 under class one. Then we have way, uh, way spend, way machine, we machine here too. We acquired it for forty eight thousand, for forty eight thousand, which qualify for class two. The other thing, let me look on uh, whether there is any asset which we acquired during the period, and I can see, um, in note number which note, um, let us go up there under the income statement. I can see we were able to uh to acquire office furniture. The office furniture which qualifies for class two, the rate is around uh, that three sixty thousand. We purchase at three sixty, right? If we have any disposals, we normally less, less disposals, and in this case we have none. So let us calculate our qualifying cost here. What is our qualifying cost? The first one I can see is the summations, two forty thousand. It's a mission of 240,000. Then the other one will be how much? I take uh, 192, 165, right? Plus 48,000, plus 360. We are getting 600, 165. We less the WTA. The WTA of ours will be how much? So it will be your rate times the qualifying cost. Let me start with the second one. It will be 60,000, 016.5. Then the first one will be 240,000 times 0 0.25, getting 60,000 here. What will be the written down values? At deck 2017. Day 2017. The written down value at the end of the period is to be 240,000 minus my answer, getting 180,000. Then the other one will be 600,000, 600, 165 minus 60, 016.5. We are getting 540, 540 
148.5. Now, the capital allowance for WTA, which you are going to be using for computations, will be the summation of the two, these ones, these one, and this one. And we shall be able to, to, uh, to incorporate it when we are uh, doing the adjustments as, uh, as requested by the examiner. So let us go to, because already I think we have already computed the uh, the, the items uh, which are assisting us to uh, to do the requirements. I just want now to go straight to the requirements. And I can see we are being required to do a question. Um, and that question should be also reminding our first topic that we have already done. How do we normally sort out those kind of adjustments? So allow me to wrap up this point here first. Let me just wrap up to that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me wrap up to that point. So remember, we are being required to uh the, the, the topic of the of the discussion should be Savannah Limited. We are talking about 2017 adjusted taxable income computation. So we are going to be having two columns of Kenya shillings, reducing the, our shillings to thousands. And the other one we have, we also reduce there. So we normally start with the reported profits. Reported profits. Our reported profit is per the question provided. We are being told uh, we have 1295 Let me let me remove this. I have to find another old figures. So here should be 7500. Then we are going to be adding disallowable expenses. I'm going to be adding back our disallowable expenses. And uh, our disallowable expense, we are going to be starting with the additional informations as requested you earlier. You're supposed to be starting your questions with the um, additional information. So we have been told the company operates in a factory building whose construction cost at the time of first operation was 4.8 million. So the cost of the building is including the director's emolument. That is a disallowable expense. So we start with the factory building. of 4.8 million, which was included in the director's emolument, making the director's emoluments to be more than how it should be. So that is a disallowable expense. That was wrong. Number two, we have been told that the company acquired the portable packaging machine, but it was not included in the, the number two and number three, they were not included in our income statement. Therefore, they are not affecting our net profits. It should be 29, sorry. It should not be 129. Someone has not even corrected me on that. It should be 29, 57, 500. Let us proceed and we say, not number four, not number four, the legal expenses include the cost for disposal of burnt packaging material. I remember during the Kibaki time, all the companies were required to, to come up with those, um, to come up with those um, chimneys where they are going to be uh, burning the, the waste. And, and they're exposing them to the atmosphere, but they were treating. I remember that was one of the requirements that it should be allowable expense. We have negotiating a loan agreement, disallowable. Negotiating a loan agreement was a disallowable expense. We say the company can only raise, um, can be able to raise the capital using there. They can be able to use only one source. Issue of ordinary shares for the public subscription. So this is 36,000, which is a disallowable expense. Now, after that, we are saying processing legal documents for the new factory plant. Uh, legal documents, disallowable. Those are the capital items. Legal documents for the new factory plant amounting to um, 19,800. The other one we have been told there, Defending a company against a lawsuit for smuggled good by a director, you even know that is a, 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 a wrong thing. So lawsuits, 
for smuggled goods. Smuggled goods amounted to how much? We are being told is amounted to 94,000. Goods. Then also we have preparing patent documents for registration. Uh, patent documents for preparing patent documents, Mr. Lawagun, is a capital item. Patent documents. So our patent documents amounts to how much? Our patent documents is 52,800. 52,800. Now, the gross profit was overstated by 20% and includes a figure for purchases of 340,000, which has been understated by 15%. So it means if we have already overstated, if we have already overstated our gross profits, it means then our reported profit is already overstated. So that gross profit is going to be deducted. And also the aspect of purchases being understated, it also means that the purchases that uh, the, the understating the purchases is also going to be causing the reported profit to be more. See the cost of sales, um, the cost of sales will also be will be less. That is why we say it normally have an inverse relationship uh, during our introductory part. Now we shall come back there. Direct allowances include management fees of four nine five thousand, uh, which relates to the uh, subsidiaries, right? The management fees. It's allowable. Subsidiary. That is why I'm deducting it. Don't ask what uh, about the management. Why is Malibu doing so? It's because it was for another company. Five nine uh, four nine five thousand. We also have interest on loan of ninety six thousand from our head office. Um, was included directors the monument that we are saying that um. The interest was to be treated as a, as a receipt from a thinly capitalized. So the thinly, um, I, I have forgotten, but you can go and search about the thinly capitalized uh, companies. Uh, it is that interest should be disallowable. Interest on loan, subsidiary, uh, thinly capitalized. Thinly capitalized, and we have been told it's amounted to 96,000. And six thousand there. Now, from there, let us shift our, our gears to additional um our our question. Let's go to the question. Uh, on the side of expenses, then we start with the provision. Provision for depreciation. We say. It's the provision which is always all allowable is only one, the specific one. Now, this one amounts to 250,000, right? Never forget these figures, eh? 210, 75, you're going to be using them somewhere. So don't forget about them. Now from there, we have office furniture. Right, we have furniture. We say any capital acquisition is a disallowable expense and should be just be given the capital allowances granted. So the office furniture was amounted to 360. The other one would be uh, office furniture. We have computer software which we should have included this year. Someone did not uh, comp software. Comp software of ours um, is 90,000. We did not include on this figure. It should be somewhere here. So this 240, remember here we are supposed to be having the comp software. Our comp software was 90. So 90, and remember here we had some computers. Computers amounted to 240. So the total here should be 330. Nobody reminded me about that. So it should be 330,000 times 0 0.25, getting it a 250. So it means the written down values here. It should be how much? 330,000 minus 825. This should be 247. So let me, those figures 
stay there. That is how it should be because the computer software nowadays qualify for class one at the rate of 25%. Now from there, we, we go to donations. We say the only donations should be to the charitable organization. And you can see the questions, these donations which are provided here are silent. And therefore you can teach them, you, someone can do as charitable, if they are from the charitable organization, I put that. If it is silent, I can just put the figure. So it is upon you to make your adjustments. Legal expenses are, but dividends are paid. Dividends paid are disallowable expense and uh, they amount to 120,000. Then we have the last thing here, which we are supposed to be discussing should be cooperation tax. Any form of taxation is not an allowable expense in any uh, income statement computation. These amounts to 375,000. So allow me first to, de uh, to deal with the disallowables. So 4,800 plus uh, 3,600 plus 19.8 plus 94 plus 52.8 plus uh, 495 plus 96, plus 250, uh, plus 360, plus 90, right? Plus 120, plus 375. We are getting around, um, how much are we supposed to be getting here? How much are we getting, someone? We're supposed to be getting something closer to 67, 68, 600. Let us go to uh, with less the uh, allowable expenses. We also deduct non taxable, non taxable incomes. We also deduct non taxable incomes. And I remember, let me start with the capital allowances. We start with ID. Our ID was amounting to how much? 210,000. We go to IBD. Our IBD was amounting to 75. Then we have WTA now. We are supposed to be taking the summation of 82,500 plus 60, 016.5. So how much it is? 82,500 plus 60, 016.5. You're getting around 142, 516.5. 142516.5. We are done with that. Then from the WT aspect, we go to we just go to other areas of concern. And there was an a overstated gross profits, which is supposed overstated, overstated gross profits which was overstated. That is an information is additional information. That additional information should be number five. The gross profit was overstated by 20%. So it is 20. We just need the overstated over 120. We multiply it by 20 over 120. We multiply by what is our gross profit? We are being given in the question 11,520,000. So how much uh, was overstated? Uh, 20 over 20 times 11, 520,000. We get 19, 20,000. We also have understated, understated purchases. They were understated by how much as per the question we are being told that the purchases of ours, which is 340, which has been understated by 
So it means the figure which we can see there is, right, is it 15%? Yes. That figure is equivalent to 85%. What about the 15? It will be uh, 15 over 85 times 340,000. So 15 divided by 85 times 340,000. We are getting 60,000 here. We get 60,000, 15 over 85 times that. Then we are going to be getting um, uh, 60,000. From there, do we have any other problem there? We say no. Let us go to other incomes as provided in the question. The other incomes we see, we have foreign exit gain. Someone will say this was realized. So if it was realized, we just put dash. If it was realized, we put dash. We have the dividend from Azina. Azina Co. And I can see the examiner there is telling the net. So you are supposed to be reversing them to gross of 68,000. I will be able to show you about that. 68,000, the dividend from Azina. Then we have the dividend from the subsidiary. They are not sub subjected for further taxation. We shall be see that when we are dealing with the other incomes. So let us first deduct them. The dividends from the subsidiary. So the dividend from the subsidiary are how much? 244,000. 244,000. Do we have any other problem we say no? So let us get the first adjusted business income. The adjusted business income. So let me get our deduction to 10,000. Plus 7,500, plus 142, 516.5, plus 19, 20,000, plus 60,000, plus 68,000, plus 244,000. I'm getting something closer to 27, 15. 27, 15, 0, 16.5. So how am I going to be getting adjusted? So I will be able to take the reported profit 2957 500 plus 6788 600 minus my answer getting around 7031 7031 083.5 Then let us work on other incomes the other income I can see, we are talking about the dividends from Azina. Why are we taking them? Because we say the dividends which are normally issued to a limited liability company, they are subjected to further taxation. What does that mean? It means we are going to be adding them to other incomes. We tax them accordingly of where the withholding tax relief is going to be granted. So in this case, the dividend from Azina Remember, they have already deducted the 15% because we have this figure we are given as net. So it will be, so this figure is equivalent to 85%, if you know that. So you ask yourself, what about 100%? So it will be 100 over 85 times 68,000 because we need the gross amount for the dividends which we were, that they were issued under our name. So we multiply by 68,000. We get around 8,000 here. Okay. The dividends from the subsidiary I say that we don't in fact should be final. They are not subjected for further taxation because our subsidiary is just a company under our name where we, we are controlling a certain proportion. So how much is the um, adjusted taxable income? Our taxable income should be 70, 31, 083.5 plus my answer now. We are getting seven. Triple one, zero eight three point five, zero point three point five, zero point three, uh, zero eight three point five. Now, after we get that, let us calculate our tax liability. Our tax liability should be thirty percent unless otherwise stated times seven triple one, 
0 into 3.5. So times 0 0.3, getting 2133. 2133, 325, 0.05. Then we'll less the withholding tax relief of these dividends uh, from Azina now. Dividend from Azina Ningapi. It will be 15% of the gross amount, 15% of 80,000. 15% of 80,000, getting around 12,000. What is the tax payable? Okay. Our tax payable should be how much? 2133, 325.05 minus my answer. You should be getting 21, 21, 325.05. 21, 21, 325.05. Any question? Any question at that point now? That is someone who has unmuted. No, near with the cycle. Then you have to tile one with that person now. Okay. So are we have, have we finished writing? I just type there.